the marathon or the, the, the potential marathon, marathon. Didn't happen, yeah. the one that didn't happen. Um, Were you looking for something? Or yeah, I, I looked at maybe potentially doing Cal International or um, Fukuoka yeah. and even Houston down the line, but I, I think after um, the emotional letdown and, and training for a specific day, just kind of took a lot out of me and um, just felt like it was the best decision just kind of shut it down and, and take a rest um, it, was, it was pretty hard to when you prepare for one day and, and kind of be emotionally let down a little bit what about even during that week I mean were you, you must have been up and down and up and down yeah it was the like, news was different every day yeah it was a, definitely an emotional roller coaster too just because like you don't you, there's a certain level of in, uh, uncertainty with what was happening, and so it definitely was. I think everybody kind of, it was, it was a pretty big burden <coughs> for a lot of people. I meant to ask the guys yesterday this. I'm Weldon Johnson, yeah, let's yeah. run. And uh, the financial side of things, it never, you know, there's a lot of talk about what happened with that. I mean, you probably can't reveal too many details, but I mean, you know, if you're running two marathons a year, and that's a big part of your, mm -hmm. you know, financial year. How, how did that work out? That whole situation. Um. Well, I I'm, can't talk, discuss figures or anything like that. But I mean, but you got eight percentage you, of your. You kept eight percent. I probably of your shouldn't pension. discuss. Can that. you do that? Um. <laughs> but you know, if <clears throat> like not having the race definitely for is someone especially like me, um, who makes money at big marathons and stuff like that. Yeah. So it definitely hurt me, um, but I mean, someone. I mean, if you put just the average person, you work for six months, and at the end of the day, not get you know a a specific you know not get paid for it or whatever. Not to say that happened, but um, you know, it's it's. It's it was you know it's disappointing not to be able to kind of do what you right. yeah. um, train to do and yeah. and and so and I think that disappointment was mm -hmm. felt by everybody so not, just, not just the, not just the athletes but all organized. So I mean this is you know this is several months down the line from that. Were you continue, did you resume training fairly seriously in in late November? Um, no, I took about two weeks off and then. Yeah just slowly started to build back up um, so I didn't really start focusing on Boston probably until after the, the new year um, yeah. okay um, I'm, I'm just wondering you know um, you came in fourth in Boston and you know the top three guys get on the podium what what happens to you in terms of you know celebrations afterwards and things of that nature um, how do they they give you a nice check I'm sure but. yeah well just being you know a, a tall tall white guy mm -hmm. so people tend to notice me a little more um, yeah. in comparison to people I race against so yeah um, when I finished fourth, definitely people had acknowledged my performance, and yeah. um, and that's probably <laughs> it. Wasn't like I was hoisted above people's shoulders, like Rudy carried off the field. No, um, too big for that. Yeah, I know, I know. So um, not like just the notoriety and stuff. Mm -hmm. People re being very happy to to have an American finish that high. Yeah. But in in a lot of people's eyes, probably a relatively unknown American. So. Yeah. Um, it definitely was like life changing. Yeah. <clears throat> as you as you go back there, I mean, do you think that you're um, you're somehow suited for that course? Um, I don't know. It's a difficult question. I mean, you train for a course, you you put everything into it, and then you you whatever the results are, yeah. or what they'll be. Um, so. I, I mean, I, I like to think any course probably fits, fits my profile, but, right. um, you know, long straightaways and, and strength course, yeah. tend to, I do tend to do pretty well, so. And all the rhythm changes, don't Yeah. You? I mean, some people say they like to get into a rhythm for the whole race, but you, you're okay with all the changes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to, like to think so, but, you know, being a taller guy, too, if there's a lot of turns, I am a rhythm runner, so... Um, if if there are a lot of turns, like like the trials course, yeah. um, it was probably a little more difficult for me, yeah. just because with all the turns and stuff. But um, you know, I, I think Boston is a is a 
great course and mm -hmm. great atmosphere and just really a, a whole as a whole positive positive um, race. Yeah. Uh, and, and did you think you your training segment going into that was better than it had been for other races? Yeah, I felt when I stepped to the line, I, I prepared myself the best I could. Yeah. And I take comfort in, in knowing that yeah. um, and having complete faith in what I'm doing. So I felt like I prepared myself the best I could yeah. um, for that for that day. So I was pretty confident in where I was at. Did you feel that way about in November again? I did, actually. Yeah. I did. So um, I felt actually better prepared for New York. Yeah. Um, but... You know, the, the thing with the marathon, too, is you could have a perfect build-up and really just confident in where you're at, and yeah. it just depends on the day. Yeah. Um, I've had some training, great training leading up to a marathon and had a bad performance. So there's a, there's a, relatively, a relative unknown when it comes to <clears throat> the marathon. Right. I mean, it's two, two hours and, you know, yeah. For some, three three minutes to two hours and, you know, at the elite level, two hours and 30 minutes. I mean, there's yeah. a lot could go wrong in that amount of time. Yeah. And was it nice after the trials just to have Austin so quickly to focus on? Yeah, it, it allowed me to rebound um, after the performance of the trials. I mean, I was really disappointed. And when you work for something and your goal is to accomplish, I mean, I had... I felt like I had a legitimate shot. I mean, things would have had to fall in place a little bit, but I felt like I had a legitimate shot at making the team. And to run as terrible as I did, I just needed something to, you know, I needed to get out of the dark room that I was in and, and allow myself to focus on something different. Did, did it go bad early? Um, it, was, it was about 17 or 18 miles. I kind of hit a rough spot and just never really came out of it. Well, at the, you know, in, in this segment that you're in, I mean, you still have a few weeks to go. Um, how does it compare with, you know, last year's Boston and and, and the and also the build yeah. up in New York? I mean, are, you, are you are you feeling as good as? Again? Yeah, I, I am feeling pretty pretty. You know, I've I've done more mileage this this time around. Um, I've added some cross training. I did a two times a week where I'm on the alter G for like 30 minutes and then mm -hmm. EFX. Uh, on another day, so I'm doing a lot more training yeah. than I have before, um, and probably about 10 more miles a week than I've previously done. So, what's that get it up to? Uh, let's see, I'm I'm varying between 130, 135 miles uh -huh. a week. Okay. Um, so, I'm doing a lot more running in in, yeah. in, in comparison to things I've done in the past. Are you coaching yourself? Yeah, still coaching myself. I'll jump in with um, Hudson's group if they're kind of doing uh, something similar to what I had prescribed for myself. And, you know, we work together and um, help. I help those guys out in his side. Definitely. Who's in that group? Let's see, Fernando, Cabada, um, Kenyon Newman, Pat Rizzo. Let's see, a few other guys. So is, Zach Hines. Is it good to have guys... I mean, just someone else to run with? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. But I, I also enjoy the time of just running by myself. I mean, there's a certain level of um, um, toughness that you kind of gain when you're the only one out there and you don't have someone patting you on the back telling you how great you are and, and things like that. So um, I enjoy that time by myself, but I also enjoy the time running with other people. How did coaching yourself come about? Um, well... I, I've had great coaches in the past, and I felt at my age, I'm 31, approaching 32, that I just kind of wanted to do it on my own. Um, so I just felt like it was a good decision for me um, to leave, leave my last coaching situation and, and do it on my own and just have complete responsibility over what I was doing. Um, so it was just kind of a point in my career. I didn't know how long... I mean, I didn't. Ex it's not that I didn't expect Boston to happen, but it happened, and so you know, there was potentially just kind of moving on from running um, after Boston and and pursuing other things. But you know, unfortunately for me, I ran great and allowed me to continue on. You know, or unfortunately for you know, but right. you know, 
No, I remember uh, we, when we talked, I guess it was before Boston, you, you, you pretty much said, like, if this one doesn't work out, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, a, like, for a guy in, um, at my level, it's very difficult oh, to you just got in. stay in the sport. Um, sort of like the A minus one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a top heavy sport, and yeah. it's it's slowly starting to even the gap starting to grow a lot more. Yeah. Um, and you know whether that's fortunately like you'll probably see less guys sticking around in the sport just because it's so top heavy. You guys are running a lot faster. The money is very limited. And, when you see, I mean, you're seeing the not among Americans, but internationally, you're seeing a profusion of you know 205s and 206s. I mean, that's gonna make what does it make you think? Well, maybe I'm yeah. gonna hang, hang it up or something. Yeah, I mean, no, like you know, all you can do is the best you can. I mean, you never know what happens. Yeah. Like, I don't think any of the anybody at the start line at Boston expected it to be 80 plus degrees. You yeah. know, yeah. So. Um, you know, there's a certain element of the day that it just happens. It, that's out of your control. What's the best part about having complete responsibility for your training? I, I sleep a lot easier at night. You know, like I, I trust in what I'm doing, um, and that's a that's a big component of um, when you trust things and you believe in what you're doing. I think you just take confidence in in that, and so I have. I have a lot of experience um, with people I've been around as far as coaches and other athletes and I formulated a, a training program that I felt fit me the best and the things I've taken from the times I had with coaches successfully and applied it to the things I'm doing now. Um, that doesn't guarantee it works out or anything but you know, I, I, I'll take the chance. Are you, was that just the right time in your career to do that? Would, yeah. you have, would it have been a, a good idea or a bad idea to yeah, have done that I, earlier? I think I think part of me wishes that I did it early, earlier, but I didn't have the confidence yet. Now I'm at the age that I feel 100% confident in what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I'm not selfish enough to be like, yeah, this is the only way and I seek advice from other people and, and kind of another another pair of eyes to, to help me along the way um, but I, I take satisfaction in knowing what I'm doing and, and writing my own training and, and trying to apply it to a day and making sure that day run, goes well Do the coaches you have um, usually, I mean, because you I'm wondering about going to bed at night and maybe not even knowing what the next day holds. I mean, did, did the coaches you have usually give you a long-term program, like tell you before the week, or would you basically like even sometimes show up to workouts not even knowing what was going to happen? Well, like for example, uh, Jones, I work with Jonesy. Yeah. Someone I have a high, high um, amount of respect for. Yeah. Um, we would we wouldn't find out workouts till the the day of. Yeah. Um, and that's the way he, he did things, and yeah. I had a great deal of success under Jonesy, but yeah. I also was like, you know, I like a plan and, and direction, but that, that was Jonesy's coaching style, and, yeah. it, and it worked for me, yeah. um, but I'm at a different point in my career now, too, yeah. where, yeah. you know, I'm trying to oversee everything and, and wear two hats yeah. um, and try to run well, I mean, but... Like Jonesy was very simplistic in his, his coaching and yeah. there's a great level of purity that it was working with him. Yeah. Where when you're in high school you just you just train, that's all you really do. There's no yeah. thought process. Um, you just do the work and, and you get the results and stuff. As you get through the years of running, it becomes more of a um, a business and, and trying to put food on the table and and so you can kind of lose a little bit of that that purity as you get through the years of right. running and that's one thing I, I've taken from Jonesy is just trying to keep that um, that high school innocence right. kind of that purity and, and, the, and the reason why you do things. So what's the worst part about having all the responsibility for your career? Um, I don't being honest, I guess, sometimes, you know, like, um, 
trying to balance the the line of if I'm going too hard and seeing things down the line. Um, so for a moment, I could be going really well, but you know, maybe I want to do another interval or prescribe another interval. Interval, but I'm trying not to push myself over the edge. Um, it's it's a fine line. Um, that's probably the most difficult thing. There's nobody there telling you to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I gotta, I gotta be smart with some stuff because I tend to, my my weakness is just overdoing it, and so I have to be so, somewhat more intelligent with the things I'm doing. Um, it's not, it's not just about hitting home runs all the time. It's just about. I'm fine with hitting singles now instead of trying to jack one out of the park because you strike out a lot too when you're trying to hit home runs. Do you periodically have workouts that you, know, that you, you know, where you're looking to have like let's say certain times for those workouts that will be a barometer of of your fitness? Um. Yes. Yes and no. I mean. Um, there's certain segments where, like if I'm leading into a race where I like to take some confidence in um, the, I guess the, the stopwatch or whatever. But I don't. I try not to control myself by a, a stopwatch. In the marathon, it's a lot about how you feel and at certain points and um, and just being really in tune with what you're what you're doing. Um, so yes and no. And how have preparations gone for Boston? I feel good. Um, like I said before, I um, doing more mileage this time around, and um, and doing a little more cross training. I've never done cross training prior to any of the marathons, just to do something different, try to keep some freshness. And um, so, how do you get on an Alter G? So you don't own one. No, I don't own one. Um, I I'm fortunate enough to know a. a pretty good PT there that has one in his office, so he allows me to come in and um, just jump on it real quick and then jump off. This is in Boulder? Yeah, yeah. Um, can we ask, did anything change about your sponsorship situation no, after nothing the Boston? Not, no, nothing no? has changed, no. unfortunately. Didn't give you like extra cash? Or? No, I wish. <laughs> what are, you, is, are you Nike or what? No, no. Or no one? No one. No one. Really? Yeah. Do you have any any non shoe sponsors? I Boulder Running Company actually provided me with some shoes and and stuff like that. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I mean, I can't control what um, other people do. I just try to focus on what I'm doing. And I mean, I so, love. So it's all it's totally dependent on the races. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So was it like? Let's try to just look it up. The prize money in Boston was it like? As soon as there's like an American bonus, was it eighteen thousand for fourth or something um, like that? Is there a time it was bonus? Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no shoe bonus or anything for you? No, no. It was just, yeah. And then you get appearance for certain other races, and then I yeah. hope that going forward. At yeah. this point, do you think, how how long are you committed to it? Are you committed to 2016, or are you thinking it'll get run out this year? Until April 15th, <laughs> and then I'll reevaluate after that. And have you thought of life after running? Yeah, I have, actually. Um, I'd probably like to get into coaching or, or be involved in um, running in some capacity, whether it be one of the shoe companies or, you know, trying to grow the sport at a youth level and, you know, maybe be the next Mary Wittenberg. Uh-huh. <laughs> be a good job to have. Probably use yeah. a couple more. I don't know. She might want to give it up at some point. Yeah. She's got to retire. That's right. <laughs>